Hello all, my name is Krishnayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, uh, in this video, we are going to discuss about Elastic Net Regression Machine Learning Algorithm, which I had not uploaded in my YouTube channel. So that I thought, why not just upload this? I know this is a very simple machine learning algorithm, but it is good that you have the entire list of machine learning algorithm in my playlist itself, right? Now, in this video, we are going to discuss about Elastic Net. But remember one thing, in order to understand elastic net, you need to understand the in-depth intuition behind linear regression, ridge regression, lasso regression. And if you are able to understand this, understanding elastic net is very much simpler. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to basically revise this entire thing again, linear, ridge and lasso, which I've written it in front of you. And then finally, we'll try to combine everything and we'll try to see what exactly is elastic net. So in the linear regression, what is our main aim? What you have actually seen is that suppose if I have a data set wherein I need to create a regression model which takes size and predicts price of a house or it can be any other feature. So suppose if I have a regression problem statement, all I have to do is that create a best fit line and this best fit line should be created in such a way that uh, we have to try to reduce this or minimize this loss function or cost function. Over here, the cost function that we are using is 1 by 2n summation of i is equal to 1 to n y of i minus y hat whole square. Now, how this y, or y hat is basically given by this equation that is theta 0 plus theta 1 into x, okay, in this particular case. Theta 1 is basically your slope, theta 0 is basically your intercept. And based on the cost function and theta 1, let's say we are doing it with respect to theta 1 because theta 0 will be, theta zero will be 0 because we will be passing this through the intercept, right? Let's say that it is just passing it, this intercept is passing through 0 or the origin. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to make this theta 0 as 0. So my equation will be given as theta 1 into x. Now in this particular case, if I plot with respect to different, different value, now what is our aim? Our aim is to minimize the cost function in such a way that I should keep on changing the theta 1 value. Okay. And this is basically called as mean squared error. Now, based on theta 1 value and cost function, if I plot, I will be getting this kind of gradient descent. And what will be our aim? Our aim is basically to come to this global minima, right? Or near to this global minima. That is our aim, you know? So that is what linear regression basically says. Now, if I go back to ridge regression, now in ridge regression, what happens is that the ridge regression, which is also called as L2 regularization. Again, guys, all the detailed video has already been uploaded in my YouTube channel. You can definitely watch. Just go and search for ridge regression, uh, Krishnaik, linear regression, Krishnaik, you'll be able to get it. Now, ridge regression is also called as L2 regularization. It reduce, reduces overfitting. Now, how does it reduce overfitting? Suppose, let's say I have two training points and here I'm actually going to create a straight line. Now, in this particular scenario, if I have some test data, let's say that this is my test data, okay? Now, in this kind of case of test data, obviously my error will be high. So it is not always good that you should have a best fit line that passes all the points. Instead, you should try to create a line which also has some kind of error with respect to training data set also. But how that will be possible? So we'll go back to the cost function. The cost function will be used same, which is this is basically by mean squared error. Okay. And apart from this, what I will do is that I'll try to add two more things. One is lambda, which is a kind of hyperparameter. And over here, you can see summation of i is equal to 1 to n slope square, right? Slope square basically means how many different, different slopes we have, okay? Now, how this is going to do the overfitting or reduce the overfitting? Now, again, understand guys, when this value, let's say that my line passes through all the points. So, this value will obviously be 0. My adding this, you know, by adding this values, that is lambda plus this summation of i is equal to 1 to n slope square, this is never going to be 0. You know, so always the linear regression or this ridge regression will be in a, the cost function will be in such a state that we really need to minimize this. Since this is never going to be get zero, so we will try to minimize and we'll try to find the best fit line. Now, you need to understand very important thing in ridge regression. What is the relationship between lambda and slope square? Okay. Now, if I try to draw this same gradient descent over here with different, different lambda value, let's say here is my theta, which is my coefficient and cost function. Let's say if I'm considering lambda is equal to zero, if lambda is equal to zero, then I'm basically using the cost function of linear regression. I hope you can see this, right? Because when this value is zero, this entire equation is the same like linear regression, right? So what I'm going to do when a lambda is equal to zero, we get the same gradient descent. But when I increase the lambda value, when I increase my lambda value, let's say with lambda is equal to 10, now, I will create another gradient descent, but over here, you'll be able to see. And always remember, guys, this will be based on different, different slope value. What is our cost function? 
again i'm telling you please do check out my all the videos on ridge regression and lasso also i have explained it over there now because of this what is happening your global minima is basically shifting shifting upwards and you can see that it is shifting towards zero okay it will get reduced and it will shift towards zero but it will never be exactly zero okay so over here you can see that your slope is basically shifting to a uh, it is getting reduced uh, based on this particular scenario okay now let's say that uh, with different different lambda is equal to lambda is equal to 10 i got this curve lambda is equal to 40 i got this curve every time you'll be able to see that my line is getting shifted then again probably if i take lambda is equal to 10 i will be getting lambda is equal to 100 i'll be getting this particular curve but always understand in reg regression when you are reducing overfitting it will never become zero so let's say <clears throat> when lambda is equal to zero by using simple linear regression i basically got this coefficients now this coefficient what it indicates let's say that 0.36 i'm just going to rub this over here let's say i have three theta one theta zero and all okay let's say that my theta zero is zero okay let's say that my theta zero is zero since it is passing through the origin let's say my theta one is 0.75 x1 this basically indicates that with the unit movement in the x1 value and um, what value in the y it will move it will move somewhere around 0.75 okay then over here you will be able to let's say that my x2 is 0.62 coefficient theta 2 and similarly i can basically write 0.87 x3 okay now after i apply ridge regression onto this how do I apply ridge regression onto this by applying this lambda and all in the cost function? Then what will happen? The end result will be that it will try to reduce this cost. It will try to reduce this theta value. Okay. The reason it is reducing this so that uh, always understand that those features that are added and that are not highly correlated. Okay. That are not highly correlated. Let's say that there is one more feature which is like 0.25 x4. Okay, so this is the theta 4. Let's say that in this particular case, it is not highly correlated. So what is going to happen for this? After I apply lambda and slope square, this will get reduced to let's say 0 0.06a and this will may get reduced to 0.52x2. This may get reduced to 0.75x3. But this, which is not at all correlated, will get reduced to 0 0.10. So because of this, you your movement with respect to the best fit line will not have a major impact. It will move little bit and it will try to reduce the overfitting. So here it is reducing the impact of X4, okay, which is not at all highly correlated. And through this, you will be able to see that we will be able to do the reduce, we will be able to reduce the overfitting, okay. And probably this kind of curve also I have not explained in my main video also, but here I have drawn that too also, okay. So over here you can see that with the increase in the lambda value, here what is happening actually, your coefficient value is also getting reduced. It will come near zero, but it will never be zero, okay. Now, with respect to lasso regression, again guys, even though if it is negative value also, it will try to come to zero, but it will never be zero, okay. Now, with respect to lasso regression, now in the lasso regression, our formula that we are trying to multiply is this specific thing, right. So, that is lambda multiplied by slope, right. This is what we basically add it up, right. Now, in this particular case, when we plot theta and cost function, here you will be able to see that my global minima will get shifted. But there will be some points that will actually become zero. So in this particular scenario, let's say I initially with the help of simple linear regression, these are my points. Let's say 0 0.02 x1, 0 0.42 x4, 8 x2, 0.96 x3 plus 0.45, which is my intercept. This 0 0.02, since it is not at all correlated, here you can see that it will become zero. Again, how is the calculation done? I'm just saying you guys, because of this movement, you can see that it is moving towards zero. And this at finally one of the point where the feature that are not highly correlated with respect to that specific output variable, that coefficient will be obviously low. And there you'll be able to see that it will become zero. Let's say that I have one more feature, which is nothing but 0.15x4. This may also become zero. So that basically means it is reducing features. It is doing the feature selection. Only those features that are super important will only be taken care for doing the prediction. Okay. So this is the difference between lasso and rig regression. Now in elastic net, what we are doing? We are combining ridge and lasso. Suppose I'm using reducing overfitting. That basically means that I'll combine ridge regression over here. Ridge regression. And I'm going to combine lasso. Right. So when I combine this proof, all I have to do is that add this cost function and then this add these two parameters. So by this way, we'll also be taking care of the overfitting 
and we'll also be taking care of the feature selection. Suppose if I have 300, 400 features, automatically we just add this up in the cost function and then we are basically taking care of both the things. In short, we have combined linear regression, ledger regression and lasso regression to basically form a elastic net. What are the two aims? Again, a very important interview question. It will reduce overfitting and it will do the feature selection. So, and by this, this is basically my mean squared error cost function. This is my ridge this is my lasso right and this alpha uh, this lambda 1 and lambda 2 will be two different hyperparameter right so two different hyperparameter will not be the same hyperparameter so this hyperparameter will also be different hyperparameter 1 and this will play with this slope square and this will be play with this particular slope okay so I hope you got an idea about what exactly is elastic net regression. Again, to know more detail about linear, ridge and lasso, you can definitely check out my video, right? So this was it from my side. I hope you like this particular video. I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day. Thank you, Mandal. Bye-bye.